Let's go. Dude, thank you so much for getting us all set up. I, uh, I know how much they like the blue lights in these videos. They do like the blue lights. Hey, you have a good video. You guys uh, hit that like this button. This guy, hmm? too nice. Hey, today we are gonna be talking about how to clone yourself in Adobe Premiere Pro. Before we jump into that though, today's video is brought to you by Epidemic Sound. YouTube music licensing without any of the worry of getting copyright strikes against your channel. Thousands of tracks from all sorts of different genres. I use them and you should too. First link in the description, free trial. I keep saying it, but it's, it's free. I don't know why you wouldn't. Okay, let's jump back into Premiere Pro and we're gonna go over that first shot, how I, I did that where I came in and talked to myself for a second. It probably wasn't perfect, but it was a it was a quick demonstration. Okay, before we jump into Premiere Pro though, there are three things that you need to do while filming to make sure that this effect works properly. The number one thing you need to do is put the camera on a tripod. It can also work on a motorized slider. It's kind of a different way of doing it, but for this effect today, we're just putting the camera on a tripod. The number two thing that you need to do is set your camera to manual exposure and manual focus. Now the reason being that if one of you comes in on this side and then the other one comes over here, the exposures aren't the same. You're gonna have weirdness in the background. You want the background to stay exactly the same. You want the scene to stay exactly the same. So that's why we do manual exposure. And if one of you was closer to the camera and one of your versions of you was further away from the camera and it focused on both of you, but there was weird depth of field changes where like the background was kind of blurry over here, but it wasn't blurry over here. That's why manual focus is important. If your scene is very wide though, and your aperture is decently high, you can get away with doing autofocus. It'll still work. And then number three is make sure that the different versions of yourself that are coming in and out of frame don't touch each other or overlap each other. If they do, oh, this is so much harder to do. Once you have those three things dialed in, come up with a little script, talk to yourself in that script and make sure that the timing is right to where this version of yourself talks and then this version of yourself talks, that's maybe the hardest part of this effect. And once that's all done, we're gonna jump into Premiere Pro. Okay, here we are in Premiere Pro and here is my clip where it's all it's all one clip. I walk in, I turn both lights on, I, I set things up, I talk from this perspective and then I, I go to the other side, I switch, I try to talk from that perspective. Very difficult to get the timing right on this and then I do a quick intro to what we're talking about today. Okay, so let's bring this whole clip down onto the timeline. And basically I'm just gonna scrub through. I want it to start kind of right as I turn this light on. Dink, beautiful. So we're gonna cut that and get rid of it. All right, and here is this kind of full segment. As soon as I go off camera, right there, beautiful. We'll cut it. So I have two different clips now. I go over to the other side and right before I come on, we'll We'll cut it right there and we'll get rid of that middle bit. And once we have it like that, we're gonna layer it over here. So I have this video clip on top of the other one. And then we're trying to get the audio lined up first. I'm gonna see if I can get the sentences to kind of seemingly fit a little bit. I might talk over myself a little bit here, but let's see how it goes. And I'm basically just looking at the audio here. I'm trying to fit this audio waveform in the gap where there is here. I see this one's a little shy, so. I'm gonna talk over myself a little bit here. Let's see, let's see what I say. All right, man, you're, uh, you're all set to go. Dude, thank you so much for getting this all set Dude, up. Of course, I, uh, I know how much they like the blue lights in these They videos. do like the blue lights. Okay, so the audio sounds like it's pretty close. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is mask that top layer so that I can see that bottom layer under it. If you're not familiar with masking, this will, it'll make a lot of sense. So let's let's just hide this bottom layer entirely. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna to toggle this off so now I can't see it. So if I, now I just have this one track. And we're gonna go into the effects control panel and here and under opacity, there's these three things here. Create an ellipse mask, create a four point polygon mask, and create a free draw bezier. We're gonna just do a free draw bezier because I think it makes the most sense for this. It's gonna be a little complicated with the shape, but. But if, uh, if you've never seen a mask, let's just pop a mask on there real quick. Basically, within a mask, everything within the boundary is showing. Everything outside the boundary is not showing. So if I turn that bottom layer back on, now we go back here, so now here's both layers. See how this top clip, I can only see what's in the boundary and everything outside the boundary, I don't see from that top clip. So again, if that bottom clip is turned off, it's, it's just like this. So if I have that top clip 
on top of that bottom clip and I'm only letting some of that top clip come through, you, you see both clips. And that's how we make this effect happen. But I'm not gonna use that kind of mask because I think it's gonna be a little more complicated. I'm gonna use the free Bezier. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here, turn this off. See, I don't, this guy on the right, he doesn't, he doesn't come in very far into the frame. Once, once this bit's over, once he kind of gets here, he stops right there. So on this, when I turn it back on, I can, I can draw this Bezier, Bezier, Bezier? I can draw it way over here and it's, it's really not gonna get in the way too much of that other person. So you can already see what happened. So already right now, see, you'll see me kind of come in on this side and you see the hand gets cut off over there. And you can also tell that this boundary isn't pulled out wide enough. So it's not, it's not wide enough to where you're seeing some of this top frame. And I'm gonna grab this and I'm actually gonna pull it outside the frame. So now that mask is way out here. And then if I hold down on option, I can actually add a point onto this and drag it up here. I can adjust these, I can move them all around so they get that mask just in the right spot. So again, if I turn off that bottom layer, you can see that all I'm doing is I'm saying I only want part of that top layer to show and then the rest I want to be opaque and because we add that bottom layer in, you see what's beneath the top layer. All right, so then at, we're gonna kind of scrub through this slowly. So basically this comes in, I come in from that side it uh, looks like my hand actually touches right here. Let's zoom in just a little bit more and then we'll, we'll make this nice and big. See how my hand touches that boundary? If you don't have the mask selected, see my hand is actually getting cut off right there. So we know that we need to move the mask just a little bit. Let's, uh, let's just pull this in here and we'll pull this guy over a little bit as well. I think we're gonna be pretty good for the most part. So we go here, me on the right steps out and me on the left is gonna slide over. But see what happens because that mask is, is just in one location, I then get chopped off by my own mask. So we need to make that mask move as the clip goes along. And that's super simple as well. We'll just go back to the point before I touch that boundary right there, like somewhere right in here. And right in here under mask path, I'm gonna select this little toggle animation and that's gonna set a keyframe for us. And then pretty much all I gotta do is move forward a little bit at a time. I could do, I could do frame by frame here. And then right there, see I know I need to start moving this mask and we're just gonna select the mask and move it. Oops, there we go, move it. Again, I'm about to touch it, so I go back before I touch it and move it. Go back over here, start moving. I really start coming over. <laughs> My two selves are getting close to each other. And right here, I'm gonna move it again. And you can see that every time I do that, it adds another keyframe over here. I'm just moving this over. And then right, ooh, it's moving. Right there, we're gonna move that. We made a big jump. Boom, move that. Boom, and then that other version of myself, that, that bottom layer, the, the guy on the right in this frame is now gone. So now I can take this mask and I can just expand it all the way outside of it for the rest of the clip. And that's the end of having two of me on screen. So now if we go back here and we kind of play uh, this through. You're all set to go. Dude, thank you so much for getting Dude, this all I, uh, I don't know how much they like the blue lights in these videos. They do like the blue lights. Hey, give me a good video. You guys uh, hit that like this button. This guy, hmm? too nice. It Okay, and you're gonna see that you can kind of see a line between me and me, right? The, even though the exposure was set to manual, nothing changed in here. Just by me standing here or here, the light that casts on that back wall gets changed because of the shadows and reflections and things like that. So all we need to do is take that mask and right here, we are gonna feather the mask. And as I feather it, I can actually see right there those little, those little marching ants are the feather. So I can see how much it's feathering. And one important thing is that if your mask is close to the edge here, I wanna make sure that I really pull it away so that none of that feathering gets on the edge because that'll, that'll mess some things up. So let's see it now. We'll see if it's a little bit less um, noticeable. You're all set to go. Dude, thank you so much for getting Dude, this all course, I, uh, I don't know how much they like the blue lights in these videos. They do like the blue lights. Hey, give me a good video. You guys, uh, Hit that like button. This guy, too nice.
Hey, today we are gonna be- And that's it, guys. It's actually not super difficult. Let's say, for instance, I was, I was one person standing here and one person sitting here. Then you don't have to move that mask. You could just, just do a mask down the middle, feather it a little bit, and talk to yourself all day long. But if you are gonna be moving along in the frame like I was doing where, where one version of myself brought a water bottle in, the other version of myself picked it up and moved it across, you then just make that mask move along with keyframes, feather it a little bit, and boom, you got yourself a, a imaginary friend. That's you, an imaginary you, a second imaginary you. <laughs> and that's it, it's super easy. Quick Tip Tuesday, masking and cloning in Premiere Pro. Have fun with it. There's all sorts of things you can do. When I learned how to do this in Photoshop years ago, I made like 20 of myself immediately. That's a little harder with video, but you definitely could do like a wide shot and you could, you could be running around in one part of it, like real small back there in the background and then like, here you're talking and little little yous are running all back there. <laughs> I don't know, whatever you wanna do with it. But now you have a new tool in your bag to create things. Quick Tip Tuesday. Hit that like button and I will see you very soon.